Hello YouTube, this is Bitstream bringing you another update video from my experiences with this trading bot called Profit Trailer trading on Binance. Today I'm going to give you a little update about my experience with the bot, uh, what my current settings are, some lessons learned. Um, also, I'm going to be going over how my settings look on some of the charts. Uh, what I'm hoping to get out of these settings, what I'm trying to get the bot to do, and some pitfalls that you want to be aware of, and of course go over my recent results. So without uh, further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. So we can see here, uh, today the bot has done close to a percent. Um, it didn't really feel like it, but it's uh, that's where it's at so far today. Um, the day is almost over. Um, the market has uh, is down um, somewhat significantly, I guess. Maybe not for the crypto space, but you know, 10% down is is pretty down to me. Um, we pulled in yesterday um, almost 3%. I'd say that's pretty much 3% right there. It's kind of skewed because Binance was down and it left me in some positions um, that did very well while Binance was down. And um, it went ahead and sold it automatically when Binance came up and left me with some good trades. And I'll go through those in a little bit. We can see here that uh, over the past couple of days, we've made um, 0 0.003 Bitcoin off of our trading. So I think that is fantastic. Very, very good. Um, so that's where we're sitting at right now. Um, and we are currently in about four different trades right now. They're all DCA due to the market. Um, but let's kind of go through a few things so you can kind of take a look. Uh, let me take a, a look at our possible buy log. Um, so Binance, I think Binance is down again right now for some maintenance, some scheduled maintenance this time. Um, so that's why these are kind of flat, but, um, you know, these are our possible buys. We're, we're trading um, around 30 coins right now out of, uh, you know, I think Binance has like a little over 100 coins. We've cut that down to about 30 uh, with some different filters that I put in place. I've actually gone through each coin that I'm willing to trade and put them in the bot um, that I only want to trade those particular coins. So I'm comfortable with that right now because uh, maybe I'll show you some, some other reasons why. But when I first turned on the bot, I got caught in a couple of different coins that just weren't, in my opinion, good for the type of trading that I'm trying to do. Um, so let's take a look at our current pairs. Um, so we're in some Ripple. Um, got some salt, which I'm not too happy with the performance of salt as a coin. Um, got some stellar, which I'm fine with that. Um, and Lisk. Um, I've been going back and forth on whether to include Lisk or not. Um, at first, I excluded it, but you know, I took a second look at it, and you know, it's like a top 50 coin, and um, it's got high volume and all that kind of stuff. So I decided to take another shot at it, but um, I'm not too happy with it again so i think i'm gonna go ahead and exclude it um it's just not a good coin for trading i did exclude ripple at first um you know but you know i decided to give it a second chance and it has been you know a pretty volatile coin and that's what i'm looking for is volatility i'm looking for both ups and downs um where something like lisk is just pretty much down <laughs> Um, and it doesn't really recover very well from, from sharp drops, which is a characteristic that I'm really looking for. Um, so I think I'm going to go ahead and um, exclude that one, you know, when I can get uh, get some lift out of this. Hopefully, uh, you know, it, it can DCA uh, one more time. We can go ahead and get out of it. Um, but that's where we're at with that. Um, all of these have DCA'd at least once. Uh, salt is three deep now. Um, and again, um, I'm probably going to end up excluding salt as well. I've tried it maybe twice and it just hasn't worked out, um, for what I'm looking for. So that's where we're at with that. Um, now on the sales side, um, here are our sales that we can see we're, we're in pretty good territory. Um, didn't mean to do that. Hold on. 
I think that no. You go the other way. I accidentally clicked this the column sort, so apologize about that. And of course my computer is slow as I don't know what, but here we go. So these are our recent sales right here. So um you see we got out of some Bitcoin gold today. We got some populous trades going on. Uh, Cardano, which I'm happy to see on the list. Um, I do like the way Cardano trades, but it seems to rarely get to the levels that I want to trade. Um, there's an earlier Ripple trade, some Amise Go, um, some more Ripple there, Neo, which I do like to trade that coin. Uh, Ripple again, Pivx, um, Nano. I decided to go ahead and get out of Nano due to the news. Um, I saw uh, Nano react. We, I was actually in the Discord chat and trying to figure out why Nano dropped so much because you could see it. It just plummeted all of a sudden. Turns out that uh, they had that exchange incident where a whole bunch of Nano got stolen um, at the time. Um, and this was a trade right after that happened, <laughs> actually. So uh, you can see um, we it DCA twice, but um, this actually entered the trade right after uh, the it dropped. I think it dropped like 15% in like a minute. Um, and then it entered the trade on the tail end of that. Um, and then we actually DCA'd a, a few times because it was very volatile and it ended up uh, getting a good trade out of that. But um, I went ahead and excluded Nano for now, just until everything settles out because I don't, I don't want the unpredictability or um, whoever stole all that nano to come in trying to dump it all in the market or something like that. So we just went ahead and uh, went away from nano for the moment. Um, gas has been an okay trading coin. It's not the best, not the worst, uh, but it's okay. So we got some of that. This coin right here has just been awesome to trade. This DigiDio or however you say it. The bot seems to love this coin, um, especially when I'm using EMA Gain. In the settings that I use, I mean, there's there's been times where just all you see is this particular coin. So uh, EOS is in there, some more Populous, some more Ripple. Wabi, I was very excited to see Wabi. I do like that coin a lot. Um, it doesn't get down to the levels that I'm looking for that often. So I was very happy with this trade. Um, Lisk, again, we did end up getting out of Lisk uh, for a trade, but it took forever. And I just don't, not particularly excited about Lisk. Um, and the story goes on and on. Um, let me see if I can get to the trades where the exchange came back up. That was right here. So you can see this particular trade was very, very good. Um, where'd it go? Uh, come back, come back. Where'd you go? Why'd it do that? So this is a little bug that I've noticed when I'm going to scrolling through the pages of my returns, it uh, wants to pop back to the first page for some reason. I don't know why it's doing that, but um, weird. But anyway, that trade was about 20 percent, 20 percent gain on that. So I was very, very happy with that. Maybe this will work if I can extend it. Oh boy. All right, there we go. So yeah, so this these few trades right here uh, popped up overnight. Um, I think very early in the morning when Binance finally came back up and then we got out of QTM, QTM for uh, almost 20%. We got out of this one for 3%. And these were all down by the time the exchange went down. And uh, when it came up, you know, it just had a, a nice rally there. So very pleased, um, you know, that the bot stood guard overnight and uh, it seems to like trading overnight, too, because when I'm asleep, it likes to pop out, you know, a lot of these trades. So um, just just what the market gives the bot. So um, our dust log, we've got some new stuff in there. I'm still trying to figure out how to avoid dust the best way, but uh, we got a little bit of dust in there, not too much at all. This one's, you know, five bucks or whatever. I wish I could get out of this one, but I'm sure um, it'll trade Poet again at some point. Um, but uh, that'll be nice to clear the rest of this out. So that's where we're at um, with our trading. 
Um, as far as our pairs go, um, I was using a, a very popular uh, trade setting until today uh, where it was EMA gain. And I'll show you what that means later, but I just decided to go ahead and switch over to this EMA spread setting because there was a particular, uh, a particular indicator that the GNOME community put together for TradingView where you can kind of visualize what the bot is seeing with EMA spread. So I wanted to try it out, see how that works and, and formulate my own opinion on um, you know how EMA trade, EMA spread trades and what market it's good in and what situations it's good for. Um, so I went ahead and popped in those settings for today. Um, and I wish it was a better market day so I can get some better results out of it, but it seems to be okay. Um, I am using it on a one minute chart, uh, which seems to be, um, seems to be something that a lot of people were fascinated by. <laughs> um, let me see if I can show that over here. So I'm using it on a one, one minute chart. Um, this 60 is for seconds. So this denotes how much time the each candle is going to represent on your chart and then this is how many candles back the particular indicator looks so this is a three candle versus a 24 candle which is the default for the indicator um and i looked at it and you can actually look at that indicator and we'll go over it you can see what kind of trades it would have entered um and i did like the trades that it would have entered in the past so i decided to go ahead and give it a shot on the uh six on the uh, one minute chart so that's what we're running. Um, you can also see my whitelist here. These are the coins that I'm allowing the bot to trade. I've actually got this set to true for right now because I was trying to see what other pairs might get picked up. Um, but it is pretty much only trading what I have listed here, although the bot is listening to this and not this at the current time. Um, but it's just allowing me to see what the bot is considering trading. Um, but I do also have some other filters. So I've got, um, you know, minimum buy volume. I do need to boost this up again because I had to drop this because Binance, when Binance came back up, it only looks at the last 24 hours of uh, volume. So all of the volume appeared very, very low. So I had to drop this down. So I'll probably uh, boost this back up. Um, but um, my max trading pairs are still six. And this is probably a little on the high side because I it won't allow me to fully DCA um, all of the coins. You know, if I got if I get six and they all need to DCA, I won't be able to. Um, but I'm hoping that the fact that my other settings are very deep and very picky uh, that I won't be DCAing a lot because I'm trying to buy very deep on um, very deep. Um, drops in the coin and I'll show you what I mean when we get to the chart um, and I've also got my spread very tight uh, this is the difference between the bid and the ask um, from most people I see they run like a two percent maybe a one percent spread and I've got it less than one percent so this is a very um, picky setting um, and this is to help filter out pump and dump coins or coins that have a big uh, reaction like uh, Neo or not Neo, but uh, Nano did the other day. Um, you know, even if the bot would have saw that drop and, and thought the drop was a very good trade, it wouldn't have traded it because the spread was very wide on that, um, which helped me stay out of the initial drop, which I was very happy with. Um, and here's our buy value. I'll show you what this means here in just a second. Uh, but this is a pretty wide buy value. Um, it takes a lot of sudden movement for the coin to satisfy this condition, uh, which is what I'm looking for. And then our trailing, I've got that at 0.1%. I've been playing with this right here between 0.1 and 0.2. Still trying to figure out because I still think EMA spread buys too high. Um, you know, it buys it, it, to me, EMA spread is looking to buy the coin when a drop has already finished and it's trying to uh, retrace or come back up. Uh, that's to me what EMA spread tries to accomplish. Um, I still think the EMA spread buys too late 
personally, but I'm st still trying to finagle with it and see if these settings um, support my theory on that. Um, and then my sell strategy is still pretty much the same um, as far as that's concerned. Now this right here is why the bot is in sell only mode right now. So when um, Bitcoin drops 6% or below, it's gonna go into sell only mode. When it recovers to only down 4%, then it'll come out of sell only mode. And this, I don't like trading in markets where Bitcoin is dropping uh, significantly uh, with the way that I trade right now, and especially on a one minute chart. Um, I don't like trading in those conditions um, because to, the way I trade, that's a, a way to collect a lot of bags. If it, um, you know, if you get caught in that, which we kind of did um, already. So these are trades that were already in there, but it kept us out of further bags um, by going into sell only mode. So we're going to let the market drop and finish dropping before we uh, enter back into our buying. Now, I don't have it set up on a Bitcoin rise. This was the type of market that we were in yesterday when Bitcoin was like up 10 percent. Now, that also causes the alt market to drop against the price of Bitcoin when Bitcoin is rising very fast. But I do like trading in that market because my theory there is that once Bitcoin stops rising as fast as it is, then the altcoins are going to catch up. Um, and that kind of bared fruit uh, yesterday when that was occurring. So everybody in the chat was surprised that I was trading in those conditions. And, you know, it made sense once I explained why they still thought I was kind of crazy, but it worked out. So um, this um, is my individual coin settings. So I've turn most of them off uh, since I switched over to EMA spread. But uh, once I go back to EMA gain, I'll turn these back on. Uh, this is from me charting these individual coins and seeing what type of buy value work best for each coin. Um, so that's where these numbers are coming from. And that's pretty much that. My DCA settings, um, I just made a small adjustment. I boosted my first level DCA to the coin being down three and a half percent from two and a half percent because I want to DCA a little bit deeper uh, than what I have been, um, especially being on a one minute chart. So uh, other than that, it's still pretty much the same as what it has been. I'm thinking about lengthening and widening uh, these spreads, excuse me, these spreads even more, but I haven't uh, haven't done it yet. So that's where we're at with that. Um, and I also changed this to uh, not to ignore sell only mode because I don't want to DCA um, when the whole market is falling. I want to go ahead and let the market finish. And then once it turns off automatically, then it'll probably just go ahead and DCA wherever it's at if it's very deep. So I'll uh, see how that works. Um, so there's that. And then again, my indicators, I'm on a one minute chart right here for my EMA. All right, so let's go ahead and go over to, actually let's see what the bot is just looking at so we can kind of get an idea to see what the bot might have been seeing. Um, so let's look at, hmm, let's look at our DigiDio, DGD. And uh, so you can see what the bot is seeing because it's um, close to being, uh, meeting my criteria for a buy. All right, so here's one of my favorite coins to trade, uh, Digix Dio, D Digi Dio, whatever you want to call it. Um, this is a one minute chart, and you can see this little area down here. This is from the indicator from the GNOME uh, group. Um, this indicator is for EMA spread. What it will do is it's a visual re representation of what EMA spread is seeing and where the bot is considering buying at. So the yellow line right here um, at the bottom is representing how wide the spread is. So as the, the yellow line goes further down, the spread between the two EMA lines is increasing. And you can see on this right hand side, this is the percent difference between the spread and I currently have the indicator set at just above 1% that's where it should look at buying now what's cool about this indicator is it also includes trailing so you can see 
uh, where the bot would cons would actually look at buying if you have a trail set. So right now uh, it's trailing, I believe, at 0.2, yep, 0.215% um, trail. So in other words, it will continue to trail the coin down. And then once it um, meets that, that stop point of 0.215, uh, then the bot will go ahead and try to buy that coin. And I actually watched it as it was occurring today and it did exactly buy right where this indicated. So none of this right here is indicating a buy condition, which I'm very happy with because these kind of 45 degree slides, I don't like those. Um, even with these pops right here, I mean, th this pop would be okay. And I think my other EMA gain setting would actually have bought right here where this one is not. Um, but what kills trading with profit trailer, in my opinion, is these slow bleeds um, down at like a 45 degree shallow angle uh, because it doesn't really, there's not a lot of volatility. It's just kind of bleeding slowly down. And profit trailer, if you're looking at quick snipes, uh, needs volatility so that it, it can recover to get out of the coin. And from my experience, you need about somewhere around a two to three percent volatility if you're looking to make a percent profit on a coin. You need about a two to three percent volatility from the bottom of your channel to the top of your channel to be able to successfully make a trade within that time period. So, for example, this particular area right here from this bottom area um, to the top area, that is almost one and a half percent so even if I were to my indicator were to work perfectly and I were able to start trailing this coin right here um, from my experience this would not have been a successful trade and I would not have been able to get out of this coin because there's not enough play so what what you'll see is happen you're never gonna buy at the very very bottom um, first of all, you're going to trail a little bit and that trail is going to cost you some of this bottom area. Let me zoom in a little bit. So let's say your bot decides to look at buying right here. This meets your, this drop right here meets your criteria. This coin, this, uh, bar, not, not this lower bar, but this mid bar right here. Then the bot starts looking at it and it's trailing it down and then it starts to come back up a little bit, you're not going to catch the very, very bottom ever. Um, on a very good trade in this little swing area right here, probably would have bought somewhere around these bars right here, like in the middle of these bars, okay? Um, and then it's going to ride it up, ride it up, and then it's gonna trail again if you have trail setting. Um, so you have a choice as far as getting out of the coin. You can either get out right at a specific percent which you're probably going to lose a little bit on the bid ass spread um, or you can trail it up and try to catch a little bit more profit um, but you're also risking whatever the percent your trail is so let's say you have like a half a percent trail that means you're always going to sell half a percent down from the top maybe a little bit more based on the spread the bid ass spread so you need you need to account for a little bit of play on the bottom and you need to account for a little bit of play on the top of your trade um, in order to make a successful trade and for my settings it's about two to three percent of what I'm looking for and this particular ride up was only a one and a half percent ride up and I wouldn't have probably wouldn't have been able to get out of that trade this fast so what is that what's the implication of that so let's say I bought in this bottom area and I need the coin, you know, to rise a certain percent from that. Well, if it doesn't, then I'm just stuck in that coin and I'm just riding it down. I'm riding it down. I get a little pop, but not enough pop to sell based on my settings. So it falters again and it just keeps sliding down and sliding down and sliding down. So when, I, when I'm saying that these uh, slow bleeds kind of kill your trades, this is what I'm talking about. So there's not a ton of volatility in this channel. Um, you get a little bit, but not enough. And then you're just stuck in this coin, riding it, 
you know, hoping that we get a, a pop. Um, usually this coin doesn't do that that often. It does do it, but not that often. Um, but that's what I'm talking about. So let's see if we can find a spot where it would have satisfied our trade conditions. And here we go right here. Let me see if I can zoom into that spot. Uh, forgive my computer. I know it's slow. Zoom in. Okay. So this green bar signifies where the bot would have tried to make its purchase, where it would have bought. Um, so you can back test your particular strategy on each coin and see if you like where the bot would have bought. So here, um, I think that's a pretty good trade, honestly. So let's test that with our percentages. So we can see the bot would have bought on this tiny little doji right here. And let's see if we would have got out of the coin. Uh, so we got a 1% rise. Um, my settings are for 0.8%. So I think I would have gotten out of this coin. It's not guaranteed. It's still a little tight. Um, it depends on the bid ass spread, which has a huge impact on where you actually exit the coin. But I think I would have gotten out of this trade um, right here. And you can also see, okay, if you make a bad trade, would you have DCA'd or when would you have eventually gotten out? So I can see right here, if I didn't exit the coin either on this candle or this candle, then I would have been in for the long haul on that particular trade. Um, but I still think that's a good buy based on my settings. Um, I think that was a good entry point right here. Um, and if I slide over here, see if we can catch any more. All right, here's one right here, and a couple of them actually. So it looks like it liked the volatility in this little slide down right here. So let's see um, if we would have been stuck or where we would have gotten out at. So that bar is landing like on this area. Now, let me see if I can zoom in and illustrate a little bit of why I'm not a too big a fan of EMA spread. So one thing I do like about EMA spread is it seems to avoid these slow dribbles down. Um, because what happens when you have a slow bleed is that the moving averages stay pretty close together. Uh, for the moving averages to have a big split, um, the coin needs to drop relatively fast to pull the fast EMA away from the slow EMA, thereby increasing the spread. Um, so right here, uh, what you're looking at on this particular indicator, when this white line goes below the green line, that's when the bot has targeted this particular coin for a buy. So it targeted it right around here, and then it's going to trail. It's going to trail it down. It's going to trail it down. Now, once this white line turns to light blue, that means that the bot is trailing. So this is a little bit technical, but when... At the point where the yellow line passes where the blue line was, that's when the bot is going to buy. That indicates that the uh, the coin has risen uh, to the point of your trailing stop, um, and that's when the bot's going to buy. So that is this point right here, this small green candle at this point. And this kind of illustrates why I'm not too big of a fan of EMA spread. Um, this really doesn't have that much to do with my trail because I've changed it um, a few times. Um, but it always seems to buy a little bit late. Um, so I would have my, my EMA gain probably would have looked to buy on one of these candles right here. And it probably would have bought like right there. Um, but this one is bought a little bit late. Now it doesn't, it hasn't made a much difference in this particular trade, but on other trades, you can see where it does actually make a difference. And I'll see if, maybe if I can find a spot like that, but we would have entered the coin right here and we're looking for like 1% or a little bit more than 1% to get out. So we're going to have to make a rise of about this much to get out of this, 
uh, trade. So let's see at what point we actually satisfy that. Um, this little rise, this would not have gotten us there. Um, let's see. So we would have had to wait until this area to actually get out of our trade. And that is about three and a half hours later, which is fine. Um, and that's another thing to kind of uh, know about the bot is you got to set your expectations properly um, to how long you're going to be in a trade. Like me, I want to get in and out within, you know, 15 to 20 minutes of a trade if I can. But, you know, if it takes a few hours to get out of a trade, that's fine. Um, maybe even a day. I've seen some trades. I plotted some trades that take, you know, a day or two to actually get out of the trade. So you just have to kind of set your expectations accordingly that sometimes it's not always going to be just down and right back up. Um, but this trade, it. Um, if it didn't DCA first, which actually it may have DCA'd, um, but if it didn't DCA, it would have took three hours to get out of. If it did, I probably would have been out in this, you know, within an hour um, if it did DCA. So that's an okay trade. We're out. Uh, this one, this particular trade right here, right before, uh, this may be an, a quick in and out depending on where the bot decided to buy so it bought in this green bar so we'll say it bought like right in the middle of the bar and then we got a nice three percent gain um, within 12 minutes of that trade and we're in and out on that particular trade so that's a good buy uh, this buy right here it got in on this uh, this green bar right here so again, this is another one that I wish it would have got in a little bit lower. So EMA gain probably would have got in earlier, like right on this bar. Um, so it would have gave us, you know, a, probably would have been a, a difference of like half a percent um, difference. But either way, we would have escaped that trade uh, with a nice gain um, if the bot was able to um, execute on this buy. So it could be... You know, we could have got out, depending on how this thing traded, you know, from like a percent to all the way up here to 5% somewhere. You probably wouldn't have caught this wick right here, but let's just say, you know, 3.5% trade within five minutes um, on that particular trade. Um, so you can see that there's not a lot of these trades happening, and it's because my my settings are very stingy. Um, I don't want to be trading every single um, fluctuation in the market. I want to be very selective with my trading. And I understand that that's going to cost me a few trades. But the flip side of that is um, I get a lot of in and out quick trades. You know, So once it does meet the criteria, the thing about these coins, um, they don't like to be super far away from their averages. Okay, so if it's you know, one, two, three percent away from the average or out of the channel, then chances are very, very high that you're going to get a rebound very, very fast. So the faster, the harder that the coin drops, and this is not considering if there's news, if there's news, that's a different story. But if it's just a regular drop, um, regular volatility, the, the harder it drops, the harder it rebounds. Um, so here's a trade that I did in Digi, uh, Digi before, um, and this was on EMA gain actually, and this kind of illustrates what I'm talking about. So sometimes I actually mark my trades on these charts, uh, so that I can see when I'm supposed to get out of it. So this is a perfect example of what I'm talking about where I think EMA spread trades later. Um, so I actually, EMA gain actually got me into this coin. You can see where the red turns into the green right at this level right here. That's where I entered the trade before on this big red candle down with my old settings. Um, and then you can see EMA spread would have entered the coin right here on this green bar. And I don't know where on that green bar, um, probably in the middle of the green bar somewhere. So again, that would have cost me a few percent, I'm sure, because um, there's no way it would have bought at the bottom of the green bar, um, in my opinion. But um, 
So you can see that depending on where on this green bar that it entered, it entered it a little bit later, um, but it could have cost me a few percent. There's not much upside here as far as it helping me any percent. Um, but I'm guessing from what I've seen, it probably would have traded it right in the middle of the bar somewhere. But um, relatively the same time frame, it would have picked up on the same trade within a few minutes of each other, um, three or four minutes later. Um, and then either way, we still would have been out of the trade for a gain. So it's not the worst in the world. I just like to catch bars early when they're when they're dropping like this because you're more likely to hit a rebound pretty fast. Um, doesn't always work, uh, but it does work more than it doesn't uh, for the most part. So you can see my EMA gain strategy I entered in right here, and then we exited somewhere over here on this bar, something like that. Um, maybe even on this bar, I don't remember what the, which, you know, what, how much I made on this particular trade, but we exited somewhere around here. And that trade only took like 10 minutes. You know, it took, uh, yeah, about 12 minutes on that particular trade. So we could see we potentially made two and a half percent on that trade or some, somewhere around there. So that's kind of a use case for this particular. Now, one good thing is that getting in early on this particular trade, um, you know, it could have continued down, which has happened before. Um, but EMA spread, it would have not entered the trade until the coin was on the way back up and it had finished and it got it out pretty much all of its uh, negative energy or a lot of its negative energy. Um, it would have waited uh, for any you know, slide to finish. So that is a, a good thing about it, but you are going to cost yourself a, maybe about half a percent or so on the upside um, for that type of protection. So just something to know. Um, here's another trade it would have caught. So it would have caught this green bar right here. You would have been out within a few minutes. Um, here is another trade right here. This one would have DCA. So you can kind of look at that one and see this is not enough to get you out of this particular trade. Um, maybe it, you'd be really lucky to get out of this trade on that candle. Um, but you would have DCA'd and then been out most likely, which is okay. Cause I mean, what is that? 20 minutes? Um, yeah, like a half an hour you would have been out of the trade. So, um, you can kind of put this on your own chart and just kind of back test and see, okay, this is how long would it have taken me to get out of this trade under these conditions. You can adjust the settings right here if you want different, you know, different uh, parameters in there. You can test it on different time charts. So if you're not comfortable with the minute, you can go to five minutes. You can go to a day if you're looking for more like a swing trade type of situation. Now, the bot is going to give you very, very different results on different time period charts. So it's not going to make the same trades on different time periods at all. So um, you can kind of look at different time periods and see, you know, what what tickles your fancy. <laughs> um, I think that I'm honestly thinking that diff EMA gain and EMA spread work better depending on what time period that you're looking at. Like EMA spread might be better for longer term chart charting and EMA gain. I think works better for very short term charting is like a minute. So I would be I, I was not happy with EMA gain on like a 15 minute setting. Um, I was more happy with it on a five minute setting and I'm very, very happy with it on a one minute setting. EMA spread uh, looks like I would be happier with it on a longer term chart than EMA gain. So that might be the determining factor right there because you can just kind of look and see the uh, the trades that it would have made and you can just eyeball it and see that all of these trades would have been successful and it also kept you out of all of these slides right here where if we're in a one minute chart we would have traded about two or three times in this area I think um, on this downturn right here and the same thing right here where this EMA spread kept you out of 
all of these uh, these slow bleeds right here, kept you out of all of this slow bleed right here, but it got you into this area right here where you would have been out of the trade, you would have been out of the trade on this one, you would have been definitely out of the trade on this one. Uh, this one probably would have took a little bit, um, but you would have been out in this area right here. So all of these trades would have been successful on EMA spread uh, on these settings on a 15 minute chart. So, like I said, it gets more iffy um, the, the, the faster your time periods are with EMA spread, uh, but EMA gain seems to work very good on shorter time periods and, and not so much on long-term time periods. So, that's my thoughts for right now. Um, if you have any questions, concerns, comments, whatever, just let me know. Um, this is obviously a work in progress. It's a good, um, good to see at least for me, good to see what a low balance bot trading looks like. Um, again, I'm probably trading more pairs than I should be, but um, you know, I want to get more trades off, and I understand that it's it's a little bit more risky that way. And I might um, have to sell some for a loss at sometimes, you know, um, and I'm fine with that. Um, I just got rid of uh, Ethereum BTC um, because that was just meandering along and not really doing anything um so i just you know got rid of it um and took a little bit of a hit on that and that's fine so um oh look at that one this is uh down more than one percent let's check out that coin real quick while we're recording so you can kind of see what the bot is seeing live um where are you populace EPT, PPT, and PPT. There we go. All right. So let's look at some uh, PPT. So this is what the bot is kind of looking at right now. So it would have made a purchase right there. And that would have been a really nice trade, actually. <laughs> um, so I'm kind of sad I was in sell only mode. But. Um, you know, we got a, a double top right here and actually a double bottom, both. So this is a very good trading channel right here. So I'm not sure if the bot would have bought here or not. I thought it indicated that it would. Maybe, maybe not. Um, it looks like it was trailing it down um, because this number is larger, way larger than what my... Uh, my settings are so I think it was trying to trail it down but that would have been a nice nice trade right here if it would have gotten in in this area I think that would be a nice trade but I don't trust EMA spread on a one minute chart to get a good execution <laughs> honestly don't I think it would buy right up here where it's at right now that's where it would probably try to buy it honestly um, I would trust this more with EMA gain um, but I'm still testing it out um, like I said, I think uh, EMA spread works well, very well on a 15 minute chart, um, but I don't wanna trade a 15 minute chart right now. It's too slow for me. Um, and I need more trades to go off um, because I'm only making like a couple of cents per trade right now because my balance is so small. So I need more trading to kind of compensate, but this would have been a very nice trade right here. Um, even this one would have been a very nice trade right here. So. Sad it's in sell only mode. I might have to look at that once I stop recording. Um, but one more thing, you want to pay attention, very close attention to your spread, your uh, bid ask spread. Um, so you can see this coin is showing 469. The bid is 468, but the ask is 540. So when you're seeing it charting right here and going up and down and everything like that, it doesn't necessarily mean that's where you can enter or exit your trade. That's just showing you what the last trade was. You have to pay attention to the order book so you can see actual execution. So people here are trying to get 533 right now. Um, they're, they're trying to sell it for 533 at the moment, which um, according to this chart is like uh, up here. So it's like up here closer to the yellow line that's what they're trying to sell it for but a lot of people are actually settling down here lower 
So if you are trying to get out of the coin and you're like, oh my God, it's you know it's green, it's it's hitting my mark and everything like that, but the the bot's not selling it. You have to look at the order book because it might be either skipping over your mark or there's not the orders to support um, actually getting you out of the trade. So just something to be aware of. Um, you know, a lot of people aren't really familiar with how that works and they're pulling their hair out saying, why didn't the bot sell even though it's up 1%? Probably because of this. Um, and this also wreaks havoc on your, your trailing. So you'll see the bot sometimes trailing, uh, true trailing right here, and then it just goes out of true trailing as if you know it never existed. Well, a lot of that's because of the spread between the bid and the ask. It'll flip right over your trailing um, as if it was never there, um, and you won't actually buy the coin or you won't actually sell the coin because the, the spread is wider um, than what the bot is allowed to buy or sell for. So just something to keep in mind. Um, it'll eventually sell. It's just, you know, just something to keep in mind when you're trading. So that's all I got for now. Um, please like, uh, share, subscribe, uh, help the channel grow. Um, I'll see if I can put up maybe a donation address if you want to feed the bot um, or you like the content that I am putting out. Um, and we'll see where it goes from there. Um, Let's uh, keep trading. Happy trading, everybody. And we'll catch up with you next time. Peace.